What's up everybody? Jack here, and today I'm going to share everything that I've learned about dropshipping since I got banned over two years ago. Now I've been consulting with people who run much more interesting operations than I ever did, and I've learned some really fascinating things about the industry that I'm about to share with you. That are going to enable you to dropship continuously even after you get banned. Remember, if you're interested in any kind of consulting, look in the link below, or if you want to check out my dropshipping course, it has all the basic stuff. This stuff I'm about to share with you completely for free. This is all the advanced high-level stuff that typically you would have to pay money for. Essentially, you shouldn't just have one account. You need lots of different accounts. You also really need to understand eBay as a platform. eBay isn't doing the best things it can for its buyers and its sellers, and you need to understand that there's another group of people that eBay really cares more about. The reality is dropshippers degrade the experience of buyers on eBay. Not all dropshippers are bad, but this is the overall effect of dropshippers. However, they also bring large quantities of revenue. You're going to learn about the relationship that eBay has with its buyers, its sellers, and with its stockholders. Look in the description of the video, and now enjoy. See you there. What's up everybody? Jack here. And today I'm making a dropshipping video, and I'm, I'm not getting back into making dropshipping videos, but I understand now that I'm in a position where I can provide a bunch of you guys with some really, really useful information, okay? The first thing I want to tell you is that there is a life cycle that a person goes through. They learn about dropshipping and either pursue it or don't pursue it. They get into it and either earn money or don't m earn money. They will then give up or not give up. At some point, eBay will make some change. And this will start to make this person in this cycle of learning about dropshipping believe that the opportunity of dropshipping isn't as real anymore. Maybe this individual isn't earning as much money as they were before. So they start to think dropshipping is dead and it is due to too much competition. I have an unfortunate reality for you. Dropshipping has been the most competitive way to earn money online with the most competition for years. It's been that way since before I even got involved in it. Dropshipping is one of the most hardest things you can do to stand out from the competition because dropshipping is an opportunity to every single human on this earth with an internet connection. The pool of eligible people to try dropshipping is rather large. You have a lot of competition. And this has been true for at least five or six years. This was true before I even got started in it. It is a misconception that as you get in, you're in a time when less people are interested in dropshipping, and then you start earning less money, and it's because too many people are dropshipping now, and so you stop. That's what most people think, but the reality is people who start dropshipping in 2015 think that. People who start dropshipping in 2020 go through the same experience. People who start dropshipping in 2012 go through the exact same experience, and they can't all be right. Dropshipping is very competitive, and there's so much to get into it. For the context of this video, we are talking about dropshipping on eBay using retailers such as Amazon, Walmart, and all that kind of stuff, okay? And there's a lot of misconceptions. First off, this is now actually against eBay policy. But don't worry, that's just eBay's face value. eBay is actually a very greedy company, and they don't really care that much about their sellers or their buyers. What they care about is earning more money despite the fact that eBay is not growing. Before you can get into dropshipping, you need to understand the circumstance of eBay. Because in order to be the best dropshipper and earn the most money dropshipping, it's not about being good at dropshipping. It's about being good at understanding eBay, understanding trends, connecting to other people interested in the industry through usage of YouTube, and understanding your digital footprint. These are the four things you need to understand if you are really trying to take this seriously. If you're in a position where you want to earn money dropshipping, it is not easy. I highly encourage you to do other things. Focus on content creation and creating your own 
products. You want to become an influencer. You want to become somebody who other people follow. This is a better life with better pay and more enjoyable work, okay? That being said, if you want to drop ship, this is everything you need to know in order to do it properly. And I understand you're gonna feel frustrated because in this video, I'm not gonna show you how to make an eBay account. I'm not gonna show you any of the, this is you making the account, this is the step you take. I'm not holding your hand for this shit because drop shipping is very hard. If you cannot do research and plan ahead, if you feel like you must do something right now, you're impatient with yourself, you don't know enough to succeed. You are competing with most of the world. And in order to help you the best that I can, I'm going to share with you what most of the world's misconceptions and fake ways of thinking that hinder them regarding dropshipping are, okay? You're gonna get banned. You're literally talking about something that isn't allowed on eBay anymore, but guess what? People have been getting banned for dropshipping since dropshipping existed on eBay. Even when eBay was okay with it, there was a point where eBay just let you cancel every single order you wanted to without repercussion. And eBay now says that it's against their policy if you drop ship directly from their competitors like Walmart or Amazon, but guess what? eBay's greedy, and they're not gonna ban you just because they see that. They just want people to think that that's the case, but the reality is, eBay wants as many percentages of sales as they can get, and they don't actually really care. They're just gonna look, and when you fuck up, they're gonna ban you. But guess what? There's systems you can have. Imagine you have a hundred entities to work from. One gets banned. Oh well, move on to the next two out of a hundred. I'm gonna show you everything you need in this video to conceptualize and understand what you need to remain a stable dropshipping entity throughout being banned and getting problems with changes in eBay. You need to have a very high level approach to this if you seriously are expecting some kind of success, okay? I wanna give you guys a visual, all right? We're gonna compare eBay.com to Walmart.com to Amazon.com. And we're going to look at these phrases for as long as Google Trends has had information to look at. Okay? So, let's see, how much of this chart can you guys see? I think I need to scroll up a little bit. Let's do that, we good? I think we should be good now. Maybe I can zoom out a bit. Yeah, that's better. Okay, now we're definitely good. So as you can see, Amazon is the yellow one. Walmart is the red one. And eBay is the blue one. Keep in mind also, right now, I'm just searching for the search terms, eBay.com, Walmart.com, and Amazon.com. You can see that Amazon has a lot more traction. And eBay, historically, 2004, it exists. It's a competitor with Amazon within this, the context of this metric. But around 2007, it kind of starts to dip. And then, boom, in 2009, it, it recovers and it gets to a point where it's more interested than it was in its like known history. And then that was the end of everything as far as eBay is concerned. Whatever they did around this period of time, historically, eBay has continued to lose interest. And now, in this current day, in the beginning of 2020, eBay is at its least searched compared to other major competitors it has ever been in recorded Google Trends history, okay? We can change this search up a little bit. We can just search for eBay, the e-commerce company and Walmart, the retail company, and Amazon, the e-commerce company. Now, what do you see? Oh, well, if you limit it to this way, it's actually even more damning for eBay. You can see that eBay, in this context of search results, was actually outperforming 
Amazon and Walmart. Amazon and Walmart grew almost equally. Another interesting thing to see is these spikes. Do you notice how Amazon and Walmart have these repetitive, predictable spikes, whereas eBay, eBay has a little bit of a spike, but it's nowhere near as noticeable. This is fourth quarter. Historically, Walmart and Amazon have a better ability to capture more business in fourth quarter. eBay experiences an increase in business, but it does not experience anywhere near the amount of increase that Amazon and Walmart regularly experience every single fourth quarter around the Christmas shopping season. Okay? Now, I get this is a video about drop shipping, and you're like, Jack, you're not showing us drop shipping stuff. And that's because you need to know so many more things than drop shipping to be a successful drop shipper. I'm not going to talk to you about any of the direct stuff. I'm not going to show you how to post products, how to look for things, because honestly, there's a crap load of this content all over the internet already. I'm going to give you information that you're going to have a hard time to find or you're going to have to pay for. Okay? So let's really make sure that you understand eBay is a failing company. eBay got so big that it was put in the position where it kept earning money even when it was making mistakes, and this made it blind. eBay is now a company that only prioritizes the stakeholders in their company. You can find evidence of things the CEO has said recently in meetings with investors. He literally states that eBay is not able to retain its customers and that he will continue to make them more money by increasing the amount of money they get from their existing sellers. And this is very evident on eBay with the increase in amount of things you can pay for extra. You can pay to promote your listings and pay up to 100% of what you get as the price. They give you that option. They can literally say, ah, yeah, you can get a sale and then give us all the money if you want the best ad placement possible. Of course, nobody, nobody does that. No one's going to give 100% of it away. Usually, typical rates are between like 2 and 15% for different categories. But they give you that option, right? eBay isn't a company that values its sellers and buyers. And this is fundamentally important for you to understand as someone who's interested in drop shipping. Because the reality is, sometimes eBay bans a bunch of people. They literally, every now and then, they'll be like, oh yeah, we're just gonna top toss these couple drop shippers. Oh yeah, look guys, it's not happening anymore. We did it. Yeah, it's all bullshit. Seriously, eBay wants the money from dropshippers, but wants people to think that eBay's being mad at dropshippers. Okay, so why is this? Why are people mad at dropshippers? Here's some other realities for you. Dropshippers increase return rates, dropshippers lower margins, they cause undercutting and cause markets to plummet. There's a lot of problems that dropshippers and the way people dropship create for other people. There's also a whole bunch of people who have their own products, they've worked hard, they've finally gotten the thing that they created themselves available on Amazon or something, and then they see a crap load of people selling their stuff, their idea that they think they are the only one with on eBay and on Amazon and these other people, and they're like, how the fuck do they have it? They don't realize that what's actually happening is they're just duplicating their listing and they don't have the product, they just order it from you, right? You know, and so it's not all bad. I'm not saying that dropshippers are just bad for everybody, but there absolutely is a lot of evidence that shows the way people typically dropship hurts the eBay buyer experience. There's a lot of reasons for this. Really long shipping times in some situations because you have a person who's selling something to someone who's selling it to someone else who's selling it. And if you 
each person Bojangles for a day or two, you got an extra week on your shipping time immediately, right? Like, there's a lot of things that cause problems for the buyer, the higher return rates. Buyers notice that they just purchased something and it's available on another website and it shipped to them faster and for cheaper than they got it for on eBay. And they know that because they bought something on eBay and were drop shipped an Amazon listing. This is literally advertising. Amazon loves this. When people on eBay are buying stuff and going to Amazon because Amazon provides the superior shipping and price experience for new products, it's great for Amazon. It's bad for eBay. And as a drop shipper, you have to understand all of this stuff. eBay is a great platform for dropshippers because they're probably never going to ban dropshippers. They're just going to say they will, okay? And look, I'm a person who's been banned. I know people have been banned. I know how to work around that. And I'm here to show you that whole process, okay? You get the context. You get it, right? eBay isn't a company that actually values the seller or the buyer's experience. It's not that they prefer the buyers and it's not that they prefer the sellers. It's that they prefer the investors and the stockholders. And they will blindly do everything possible to please these people above all else. But they want to make it look like they care about their buyers and their sellers. When in reality, it's a lot of luck, guys. So look, I got banned after posting over 250,000 different products to eBay. Um, the biggest store I ever had at any one point had 130,000 in-stock items, and I had scraped this and managed it. Uh, it was me and one virtual assistant, okay? I learned a lot from this process, and of course I got banned. To be, I was blindly, I was doing stuff knowing that I might get banned because I knew I could get data. I knew I could make videos. I knew I could meet people who changed my life, and that happened, okay? Even though I didn't earn much money, I learned about this whole scene, okay? And there's one thing regarding earning money. There's one metric as a drop shipper that allows you to earn more money than anything else, and that's your average sale price. You're gonna find that if you blindly post items, Imagine that all you do is you just find items for sale on Walmart and Amazon and every retailer available, and you posted $10,000 items and $10,000 items. The sell-through rate for these items would be very low. Regardless of whether they're $100 or $1,000, you're looking at a sell-through rate of either between 0 0.2 or 0 0.8, okay? And the reality is it doesn't matter whether it's $1,000 or $100. You will earn more money doing the $1,000 method because even if the sell-through rate is four times lower, you're earning 10 times as much per sale. And you may say, ah, oh, yeah, but those returns and all that kind of stuff, yeah, it's high risk crap. You have to set up processes for all this. If you can't handle stress, you're gonna give up. You're, about, you're interested in one of the most stressful ways to earn money online. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I don't do this because I would rather make courses and teach people and have conversations. I don't want to be drop shipping and figuring out how to stay ahead of eBay and managing all these accounts and dealing with bans and all that kind of stuff. It's a tremendous amount of work that requires so many things of a person, including a large team of virtual assistants that can continue to be paid in a scenario where your stores get fucked and you have to change strategy and repivot for three months or six months before your like strategy works again. You have to be able to anticipate all of this stuff and be able to continuously finance your team in scenarios where suddenly your income's cut off. This is a high, high risk game. But I know of ways to lower those risks. Unfortunately, those ways require a large amount of knowledge, a lot of studying, and a lot of persistence. Most of you listening to this are never going to do that. But some of you maybe already are or are interested, okay? And now you understand eBay's not a company 
that is interested in its buyers. And because of that, okay, I'm not saying they're not interested. It's it's not it doesn't eBay doesn't prioritize the buyer's experience. The reality is drop shippers, most of us drop shippers degrade the buyer experience. But eBay will not get rid of drop shippers because it doesn't value the buyers that much. Okay? This is the reality. It's true there are some drop shippers who are great, give amazing customer service, and have amazing feedback rates. It's very rare. Okay? It happens. People who are doing it and earn money very well know how to do that, but it's rare. Okay? A lot of drop shippers screw things up and cause a lot of problems. This is real. Don't elude yourself. Don't tell yourself, we don't increase return rates. We're just bringing business. We're just bringing them money. Why are they mad at us? Don't be dumb. Like, it's a mixture of both. Okay? So you get it. You get the context of eBay. Now, let's talk about getting banned. Okay? You may think, ah, Jack, what do you mean, like, it's the same? Like, uh, eBay says it's not against policy now. They can ban you for it. Yeah, they can ban you for it. And you know what? When I stopped drop shipping, I thought, ah, yeah, drop shipping's done. It's just too competitive. And they've changed the rules. But the reality is... Different sellers have night and day experiences, guys. You can have 10 different accounts and do the exact same thing on all the accounts, and some of them just earn way more money than others. I don't know how to explain that to you, but I now know from my consulting work with multiple different people that plenty of people still earn tons of money drop shipping on eBay. Tons of people get banned all the time, but there's tons of people who just keep going. And there's a whole world of dirty eBay reps, people who have the power to uninstate things and make things disappear, and they'll accept bribes for it. These people exist. eBay's a big company, and they outsource a lot of their work. And there's a lot of disgruntled eBay employees who currently still work for the company and don't mind giving it the middle finger and taking bribes. That's a reality. eBay's not what it makes it seem like it is. It's a pretty, it has sketchiness to it. It's also relevant to understand eBay is one of the easiest places to find counterfeit goods. That is real, that's true. Even though you get banned for counterfeiting, I was banned for counterfeiting even though I didn't sell anything fake. I was literally just selling stuff that you could buy at Walmart. So if it was actually, if Walmart was selling counterfeit products, then I guess, yeah, I could have been counterfeiting. But in these cases, you're going to find that you get in trouble for things you didn't necessarily do. And eBay will ban you just because they're like, eh, we don't like what you're doing and you caused us some, some problems. We're going to get rid of you. Even though you don't necessarily get in trouble for drop shipping directly. Um, this is kind of the reality. You're dealing with a randomness engine. eBay isn't like one entity that all of its employees understand what they're doing and have equal policies. If you don't, if you call an eBay rep and you don't get an answer you like, you can just call them back, talk to a different rep and often get a different conversation. Do that five times and you get the answer you like. You can even find reps who are going to make mistakes and accidentally remove comments and do things they're not supposed to do. If you know what you're doing, there's people who do that. They call eBay and they abuse the reps to get the, they, they keep calling and identify the ones that are new and emotionally manipulate them to get them to do something that they're actually not supposed to do, like remove a feedback or remove a restriction. This is the world we live in. This is how it works on eBay, okay? You have a lot of tools at your disposal. And some of them aren't ethical. Absolutely not. Dropshipping does have a sketchy reputation for a reason. And I'm not saying all dropshippers are sketchy, but a lot of them are. A lot of them are connected to black market stuff and gift cards that are used to launder money or commit some other kind of fraud. Think about it. Like, imagine that you are uh, an organization with large amounts of money that you need to launder. You need to make it clean, right? You're a criminal organization. 
In the past, you had to make businesses, do all this complex real life shit. Now, it's not like that. Imagine you have a million dollars you need to clean. You can literally convert it to $700,000 in gift cards and use cryptocurrencies to anonymize things and you can't be tracked by it, right? You, you guys need to understand that it's not just like grandmother scams using these services, creating these gift cards that you can buy that are 20 or 30% cheaper. There's whole industries looking to make money anonymized. And a lot of that money is from violence and hurt. You have to be careful when you're in this industry because whether you want to admit it or not, if you're purchasing gift cards and using them, there's a high chance that at some point you're using money that is laundered. And there's no way that you're going to be held accountable for that. But that's reality. You're supporting something that allows a way to anonymize large amounts of money at scale. Be careful, especially with gift cards, okay? I know some of you listening, like this is a moment where you, I split you guys up into the people who are more ethical and not ethical, because some of you are going to be like, Psh, $20, 20% off? Like, who cares? I'm going to do that. You can do that? That's insane. Well, other ones of you will be like, ah, oh, yeah, totally makes sense. I don't want to support that shit. Interesting, right? All right, you guys get eBay, you get the context, you know what's going on. I gotta take a break for a moment, drink some water, and then we're gonna talk about getting banned and how you can avoid it and all that you need to do to have a system where you have a bunch of profiles. So when you get banned, you're just focusing on a different account and you keep moving and you don't lose money for a month, okay? All right, this is what usually happens to a drop shipper. Regardless of whether they start in 2012, 2016, 2020, it's all bullshit, guys. Drop shipping's dead every single fucking year since this existed. Don't listen to that crap. Times are changing. Sometimes there's more competition, sometimes there's less. Immediately after a change where a bunch of dropshippers go, there's less competition until information about the change and everything is widespread, common use and has been, and then it gets used by a bunch of other people. And then eventually eBay changes something. It cuts off a lot of the dropshippers. Basically, you can imagine that dropshipping just grows. There's a bunch more people, right? Keeps growing. And every now and then eBay just cuts the top off and is like, ha, booyah, you gone. And then dropshipping's just like, and then eBay's like, ha, yeah, we got rid of you. And then, but like I said, it's a facade. They're not actually trying to get rid of people. They're just trying to make it look like they are, but really they don't care enough about their buyers to actually get rid of dropshippers. Because the reality is they could very easily do it. I, I know now from all this experience, I can identify a dropshipper with really high accuracy. And that means eBay can if they want to. eBay can have an algorithm that just does that. You don't need much data at all. You just need to look at a couple of their pictures. Uh, if they have like 20 feedback and like 20 items for sale at least, then you can reliably identify people if you know what you're doing. So that's been true for a long time. eBay won't actually get rid of you. If they do, that's awesome. To be honest, I know that sucks, but if eBay actually gets rid of dropshippers, that means that they're making moves to challenge themselves and change their platform and actually become a competitive cool platform again instead of one that just got fat off its wealth and then it was like doo, 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 i don't give a fuck about nothing okay so you're going to need to use certain tools to avoid this process because everyone eventually gets banned and like i said it doesn't matter whether what you're doing is against policy or not against policy you still eventually get banned if you're drop shipping um, there's only a very few select amount of people who are able to drop ship over a long period of time on one account without getting banned. It does happen. There are some educators who talk about this and have courses and that kind of stuff. It's possible, but it's not what most people experience. It's not even what like 1% of people experience. It may be what 1% of 1% of 1% of people experience, okay? You're talking about really unlikely shit, okay? You're going to get banned, okay? I want you to understand this. 
That's why you can't just have one account. If you only have one account, it's a liability. So yeah, you're like, oh, okay, I'll just make two accounts. It's not that simple. We're about to get into the world of how to manage your digital footprint. This is the most complex part, okay? Actually, here we go. All right, what is multi login? Multi login is an app. You can think of it like Google Chrome, except Imagine that when you first sign in, you pick who you're going to be, and then you click that. It has a different IP address, different resolution. For as far as the internet's concerned, you are that different individual. You're in Virginia in the United States. Then you log out, log back in, and boom, you're this other person in Kentucky in the United States. And then you log out. You log back in, you're actually in Indonesia. Okay? This isn't just VPNs. Okay, I know you guys are like, Jack, I know how to use VPN. It, it, VPN is just one component of this, okay? You need an interface that protects your actual computer's identity from being shown to eBay specifically, okay? And this is because eBay essentially takes care of about three things. I don't know any of this for certain, I'm just saying what I know about eBay, okay? eBay essentially takes care of three things. And they use these three things to ban people and make sure that when they make new accounts, it's not easy for them to make new accounts. They also use these three things to link existing accounts together. Because imagine you have 10 eBay accounts. If you don't play your cards right, when one of them gets in trouble, all 10 of them go down as well because eBay knows they're the same person. You have to be able to not give eBay enough information to see that, okay? That's very important. You have to learn all this stuff. You have to be able to understand this tool and explain it to another person in full detail. By the end of this video, you're not going to be at that point. There's a lot of other options, but essentially you use these browsers and you have to pay for proxies, okay? A proxy is basically just an IP address that you pay for and you pay like $2 a month for it, okay? And you're going to need a large amount of proxies. If you want to take this seriously, you need to start to learn with at least 10. But you should aim to be maintaining around 100. All right? You're going to get these proxies, and then you have these profiles. You log in, and every time you log in, it goes to another account. It makes it look like a different person. Okay? What it's doing here is it's hiding your IP address, it's making it look like another one. You're creating a different IP address, basically. And that's really important because this is linking information, okay? I don't know all of eBay's linking information. I've never been privy to, like, inside eBay stuff. But I know of three things. I perceive there are three things. One is the IP address. One is the billing address, not the name, okay? Your name is actually not identifiable information because eBay can't ban all Jack Pittmans. eBay can ban people with my billing address, people with my IP address, or people with my PayPal account. But they can't just ban people by name because there's a whole bunch of people in the world with the same name. And some of these eBay accounts are just registered to a first name. Imagine if all Jacks were banned on eBay. That can't happen, right? That's not in eBay's best interest. They don't want to ban people who are giving them money for no reason. They want to wait till they fuck up and then ban them, right? And that's important for you to understand because it's actually possible to be fully compliant with the law and have hundreds of different accounts and not do anything sketchy. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about because there are people who sell what are called stealth accounts, and they what you're doing is essentially you're buying from someone who is falsifying information. They're photoshopping documentation and doing stuff like that. You don't. That's not what you want. You can literally do this and have hundreds of different eBay accounts that are unlinked to each other without falsifying anything or breaking any laws. Okay. 
And what you have to do is open a lot of businesses. And essentially what you do is you open different services in the name of the businesses, and then you verify the things using the business identity instead of your own identity. You can literally get as many addresses as you need for this, right? Because I told you that there's only a couple linking pieces of information. There's the billing address, there's your IP address, and there's your PayPal account. So if you get banned, anybody who had the same IP address as you is also going to get banned. Anybody with the same PayPal account as you, they're going to get banned. And anybody with the same billing address as you is also going to get banned. And what's going to happen is those other accounts are going to receive an email saying it's a suspension because they have been associated with the following eBay user, and then it'll say the eBay username of the associated account. So this is why it's so important to keep all these accounts unlinked. You don't want eBay to know that you have 100 accounts. You have to do it so eBay sees 100 different people. And you can do this legally by using different businesses and hiring employees, using virtual assistants, and using registration services. Now, let's talk a little bit about growing your accounts because it's not that simple. You can't just open an account on eBay using a VPN in an incorporated business and then immediately be able to post a bunch of stuff. You have to understand account limits. You have to understand a whole bunch of different things. And I'm not going to get into those details. I'm just trying to show you the valuable stuff that other people aren't talking about, okay? Or if they are, they're charging you money for it. You can find all the information you need about what different sources, how to source from Walmart, how, what tools you can use to list items, what things to reprice, how to do it without using an API, how to do it with an API. You're going to learn about ScrewGrid and about DSM and AutoDS and Yabel and Fi or not Firefox. What's it called? Stealth? No, that's a different thing. Um, there's so many tools, guys. There's like, back when I was originally into this, I knew of like five. And then a year later, there were like 20. And then a year after that, there were like 100. I don't even know how many dropshipping tools there are now. But I'm sure there's more than there's ever been. A lot of people know about this stuff. There's a lot of software available, OK? I'm not going to talk to you about that. I'm trying to get you to understand what you need to do in order to dropship and earn money consistently over multiple years. Because if you just listen to these other people who are telling you one strategy, one strategy can only work in a certain context. And remember the unfortunate reality? 10 people on eBay can do the exact same thing and get 10 different results consistently. You're going to find that sometimes the exact same listing performs exponentially better than the identical listing on multiple different unlinked accounts. It doesn't make sense. That happens sometimes. Okay, I don't know how to explain that to you, but I can explain the importance of understanding that even if a strategy is viable for one person, it might not be viable for another account simply because it's a different account. There might be a different strategy that works on that account that doesn't work on the first one. And that doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand why it's like that, but it is. If you want to be able to drop ship and consistently earn money in the long run, there's so many things you need to understand. You need virtual assistants. You need training methods. You need a team. You need reserves of money so that when things change and you're earning less, you can afford to keep running. You need the ability to have so many stores that when sudden spikes of sales happen, you turn off your main stores and use a bunch of your scrappy stores that can get banned to take advantage of the traffic without hurting the metrics of your main store. This is the kind of flexibility you need to have in order to stay afloat throughout all of the changes that eBay makes. And there's a couple fundamental components here. I just went over using a tool like Multi-Login App to keep these accounts unlinked and understand you can do this completely legally just by opening a bunch of different businesses and using different um, like representative agents in each business to open different accounts. The problem that I didn't get too much into and I'll explain more with growing these accounts 
even once you understand all the stuff, you have to actually be able to get the accounts to be postable too, right? You can't just make an eBay account and post a thousand items on it. Often the limit starts at 10 or 100. And also, it's very common for people to post items immediately after making a, an account and then get banned. Literally, straight away. Because they don't have history in that kind of thing. Or they get suspended and they have to call and be like, hey, what were you selling? And if you were drop shipping, you can't say that anymore. Right? So what you want to do, actually, is you want to trigger one of these. This is a little bit of advice I can give you to growing these accounts. One, you want to trigger a suspension that you can prove, OK? So what's ideal is that you go and you post items to eBay that are just photos of items around in your house, physical, actual items. Don't start with any drop shipping. Basically, what you want to do is get some traction selling stuff physically, or at least looking like you're selling stuff physically, to try and trigger a suspension. That should be your first priority. You're going to try and trigger a suspension, and then you want to call eBay and talk to the rep and be able to show them, hey, I was just selling stuff around my house. This is what I was doing. Because they're going to ask you. They're going to be like, oh, hey, oh, we're sorry about this. Uh, tell me, where were you getting your products? And then you just say, oh, yeah, there's some stuff around my house I was trying to sell. And then that's what eBay wants. That's the kind of thing. And there's no way for them to be like, no, you can't do that. Unless they think you're lying or they think you're trying to dropship or something, right? So don't make the mistake of making an eBay account and immediately creating dropshipping listings on it. You actually need to grow all these accounts for a period of time, okay? That part's important. Um, and honestly, like, it's easier to use accounts that other people have made already and they're not using. If you want to seriously have the like, best, most reliable dropshipping account, find someone who used eBay like four or five years ago or 10 years ago and used it for some reason but doesn't use it anymore. Find someone like uh, me, actually, who moved to a country from the USA that doesn't really have good uh, eBay situation, right? Like I don't use eBay or Amazon because I have to pay more to have stuff shipped to me. So there's tons of people like that, right? You can you can get in touch with them and you can develop relationships with them where they get like five or 10% of everything and you do all the work and you just use their account, that kind of thing, right? You have to have some level of trust um, in order to have good uh, situations like that. That's definitely not something that works for all drop shippers because like I said, some drop shippers are pretty sketchy people and they fuck people over. So, you know, that doesn't mean all of us are like that, but it's a reality for a lot of people, okay? So what you want to do is make the, all these different accounts, have them have different, um, different registered billing addresses, different PayPal accounts, and different IP addresses. And then you want to post a bunch of items on the account that are all physical items, not drop shipped items, random crap around the house. It doesn't even matter if you get a sale. You are literally trying to trigger a suspension because on eBay and in most platforms, an account that has been suspended and then had that suspension removed is often safer from additional suspension or violation, okay? Once something has deemed an account as okay, it's passed a layer of test, then it becomes less likely to get banned. So you wanna purposefully kind of trigger this and then just move forward that way, okay? Next thing we want to talk about is account limits and how to grow them. Because it's a little bit more complicated now because dropshipping is directly against eBay terms of use. So if you tell an eBay rep that you're dropshipping from Walmart, they're placed in a position where they're supposed to um, like do something about it. Okay, So you can't talk about that kind of stuff. It used to be different. When I was dropshipping, I just openly talked about everything that was happening. I was saying, hey, this is what I do. Okay, I'm in a contract. Okay, this is what's happening. I even called them when they started saying dropshipping wasn't good. And I was like, hey guys, I got in a year a year long subscription to your enterprise store, and I'm required to pay three uh, three thousand dollars per month, and I was dropshipping, but you don't allow that anymore. But I'm stuck in a year contract with you, and what do I do? I straight up asked them that. I asked two reps that, and they each were like, holy shit, we have no idea, dude. Good luck. <laughs> They were cool. It was fun. They didn't ban me on the spot, but yeah, it was intense. 
So when you're growing the accounts, you're going to have trouble calling to get an account limit increase, especially if you have evidence of dropshipping and you can see that. So what you want to do is try to trigger an automatic account increase. Okay, And there's a couple things that I know to trigger these. Generally, they happen in a three-month period. So you need 90 days of activity before you become eligible to trigger an automatic limit increase. The advantage of an automatic limit increase is that you don't need to call eBay and tell them what they're doing. eBay just sees your metrics and triples your account or 10 times your account or doubles your account, okay? Because remember, eBay accounts have account limits. You can't just post a bunch of items straight away. So you want to make sure that you're aware of that. It's a 90-day a period. You can't get one to happen in 30 days or 60 days. You need at least 90 days of activity. And your account limits need to be in the red the entire time. So what does that mean? Well, on eBay, there's two metrics for account limits. There's quantity and dollar amount. If you have a thousand quantity amount, you cannot post more than a thousand items on eBay at any given point. And you also can't sell that much more. So if you sell 10 items, you can't post 991 items. You can only post 990 because the ones that sold are counted against your limit until the month ends and then that resets. Okay. However, it's not just quantity. There is also a dollar limit. So imagine you have a thousand quantity limit and you have a $20,000 limit. This doesn't mean you can post a thousand products. It means you can post a thousand products or up to $20,000 worth of products, right? So if you are posting a thousand dollar product, you can only post 20 of these, even though your account limit says a thousand. It's not and, it's or, okay? These are how account limits work. So what do I mean when I say your account limit's in the red? That means that you are using about 90% of your available limit at any given time, okay? So if you can post 1,000 items, but you're only using 90 or 900, that means your account limits are in the red, okay? All right, let's make it simpler. If you can post 10 items, and you have 10 items posted, you're using 100% of that. If you can post nine items, you're using 90% of it, okay? And it also works the same way with the dollar one. Imagine you have 100 $1 products, and your dollar limit is 1,000. You're using $100 of your dollar limit. You want to keep both of these variables always at at least 90%. So if you can post 100 items, at all times, you should have at least 90 items posted. Okay, don't worry. You don't actually have to post more items. All you have to do is change the available quantity of your existing items. And this is perfectly fine as far as eBay is concerned. Okay? I literally got a, a raise or a, an increase on an account once that had never gotten a single sale I was literally like, hey, I wanted to ask, um, right now I have about like 200 products, but I can only put them as one quantity. Uh, I want to be able to put them as two or three quantities so that people can buy more of them at once. And she was like, okay, sure. That was it. <laughs> like I got an account limit increase that way, right? That, that happens sometimes. eBay is understanding that you can change the quantity available of your listing. So you can change let's say you have 10 listings and you need to have 90 listings. You can make one of your listings or like 10 of your listings each have 10 quantity. Or if you're feeling insecure, you can make one of your listings have like 90 and then make it a price no one wants. You know, you got options. These are like, you can think of these as placeholder listings. And essentially what you want in order to become eligible for automatic limit increases is you want to be able to have these placeholder listings up and make sure that your account limits are always at 90% of their limits, okay?
That part's really important. If you do that, then you put yourself in a likely position. I think they actually also look at feedback rates. Like if you have recently negative feedback, maybe you're not, you don't get an account limit increase. But if you have all positive feedback, then you, you get one. Um, I don't know for certain. Like I said, I don't know any of this stuff. It's not like I like have a connection or worked for eBay. I just like, I know a lot about data and what other dropshippers experience. And I've had loads of conversations with loads of different people doing all sorts of different strategies. And I'm giving you all the information I know. This is my perception of what you need to drop ship in 2020. It's not easy, guys. But now you've understood, you understand eBay isn't focused on its customers. You understand that drop shippers do harm the seller or the buyer experience. But eBay isn't going to get rid of them because eBay wants money and eBay is failing. And eBay's main goal is to please its shareholders and investors. It will do this and sacrifice its buyers and sellers to do so. This is evident, and eBay has historically made regular decisions that have lost its interest. eBay currently stands at the least interested, as far as the internet's concerned, that it has been for 14 years, 16 years, apologies. Some of you listening to this are that old. eBay has been, okay, I guess that's not entirely true. It's basically around 2007, 2009. Ever since then, eBay has been consistently losing it. And it's funny because they have little like resurges, but the resurges are always followed by a further loss. It kind of is showing that they do things to make it look like things are doing better, which gives the illusion of things being better, and then reality hits in, and they're still losing money because they're not trying to please their buyers or their sellers. This is reality. Okay, so you got that, and you also understand you're going to be banned, okay? You're going to get banned if you're dropshipping. So what you need to do is create so many accounts that are not linked so that when you get banned, you can be like, okay, it's not a huge setback, right? And don't get me wrong, this isn't foolproof. You can still lose all of your accounts. You have to understand, just because you earn $1,000 or $10,000 now this month, that doesn't mean shit about next month. And if you think it is, if you think that means regular, you think you've got it figured out and you're gonna keep earning the same amount of money drop shipping, you're gonna keep earning more money every month get out of that don't be dumb if you're earning money now hell yeah that's awesome but shit's gonna change and you need a flexible plan to adapt when this happens you also need a team of virtual assistants all right so that's pretty much everything now if you're more interested in drop shipping i have a course that says literally everything else i know about it um, the, what I just gave you is all the higher level information that maybe maybe you don't completely understand. Um, I have a course that shows all of the basics and that kind of stuff as well. If you want to find the course, you can just go into my YouTube description and click on the link in the description. Uh, you can also go to Udemy and just search for dropshipping. Um, it's not going to be the first course that comes up, but it's going to be one of them. Okay. Oh, here we go. I go over like pretty much everything that I know about that I didn't just talk about. The stuff I just told you, like I said, is uh, more higher level advanced stuff. So if you're, if you want to learn everything about like international shipping, using different resources, using gift cards, drop shipping, and in 2019 compared to before, more information about eBay bans, how they work, PayPal bans, how to be profitable, how to use virtual assistants and drop shipping, how to use a bulk mentality where you're posting a lot of items. It's, you have a much lower sell through rate when you're doing this. Um, what it looks like to do it every day, different examples of dropshipping software. There's a lot of different dropshipping software. Also, you can use dropshipping to create cash flow and get yourself eligible for business loans and then take a business loan out and then do something in the real life 
that you needed money to do in order to open some kind of business. Like if you needed inventory to sell, um, like you need to sell, like me, for example, I used to mod Game Boys and sell those. So I was able to get a loan because of my drop shipping and then use that to buy Game Boy product and then resell it. Um, you can use drop shipping to bootstrap a lot of other things in your life. It's very powerful. Okay, so that's all the sections. There's like uh, multiple hours. This is, yeah, 13 hours of content. Uh, the course usually goes for between like 10 and 100 bucks. It really depends on what Udemy is selling it for. So if you're interested, just click on that link in the description. Um, I also offer consulting. So if you want to do any kind of consulting, uh, the way it works is you pretty much bring a problem and I'll help you work on it. If you need some positivity or you need to kind of figure out what path you want to go down, I understand right now a lot of people are scared, guys, um, real scared. And I'm not trying to teach you about dropshipping. Like, I'll help if you book a call with me and you want help with the dropshipping problem, I'll help you. But... Uh, I don't want people to be drop shipping. Understand that. I, I made this video because I know I have a lot of useful information for people who are interested in drop shipping. But drop shipping's a lot of work, and it's really hard to manage that many accounts and keep everything stable. Uh, you need a big team and a lot of knowledge, and you need a lot of patience. Um, I really think you're better off creating your own kind of content, or creating courses, or um, creating like some kind of product, learning how to program learning about information technology. There's programming schools that teach people online and you can learn how to build websites and use like basic languages that allow you to get gigs on other websites. And you can do this all in six months. Like you have so many options to become a talented person who takes advantage of technology and the internet and works part time and earns good money for you. You can have a happy life where you don't have to work all the time. And it's hard to do that drop shipping. Um, dropshipping is really stressful, it's really intense, and it's a great intro to that life. Like, if you were stuck in a job, it's a great way to get out of that job, but it's not a way to, it's a, not a good way to keep you going. You really need to have work that you feel in your soul is good for you, and you love it, and you enjoy it, and it's fun. Those parts are so important, guys, okay? So in my consulting and stuff, I'm really not trying to teach you guys about dropshipping. If I'm going to help you if you set up a call with me, but that's not what I'm going to I'm much more interested in encouraging people to make YouTube channels and to make membership websites and to make their own websites, to maintain email lists and to do blogging and to work with Pinterest and Instagram and all these other places that realistically you could work with every day now and then be in a position where a year you know exactly what you need to do and you don't need to wait on some platform like eBay that can just ban you at any moment. You don't need to do any of that because you are in a good position in your life that's stable from work you enjoy. And you have multiple platforms that you work on and even if one gets banned, it's okay. You just have other platforms. Like, there's a, I love that stuff. And it's more flexible because dropshipping is hard and it's boring and it's tedious and it's complicated. Like, Making YouTube videos can be catered to whatever you want. It's amazing, so amazing, right? So if you're interested in that, you want any sign of consulting, uh, check out my Calendly link. You can go to calendly.com slash Jack Dermot Pittman, or you can just look in the description of this video, okay? I offer one free 30 minute consultation that's private. So you can use this once the first time I talk to you and I'll do my best to be useful to you. Uh, just tell me about yourself, tell me what you need, tell me what you wanna learn about and I'll do my best to give you whatever information I have access to. I don't do any of that shit where I'm gonna hold information from you and wait till you pay more crap. If it's relevant, I'm gonna tell you. Like in this video that you just listened to, this long ass video, I just told you a bunch of stuff that normally you have to pay for. Like, if you really want to learn how to build accounts and do all this stuff with multi-log and Apple, that kind of crap, typically people are really buckling down on that information. They don't want to spread it too much. And F that, right? I want as many people to be able to do all this stuff as possible. I really want spread information. That's what I'm most interested in. I also want to earn money, but that isn't my sole motivation. I'm interested in exposing information to large amounts of people and applying an easier foundation for people to become self-employed and use the internet to earn money doing things that they love instead of working for other people doing things that they hate. Okay, that's my goal. I wanna earn money too, but that's not the main motivation. That's not what gets me smiling and excited and enthralled and interested. What gets me interested is thinking of a world 
where most people earn money doing their own things. I want to live in a world where most of the people I know just work for two or three hours, and then they're able to spend time together and do the things that they want to do with their day and relax and live. That's what I care about. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah. And if you want to book a call, they're $20 for 30 minutes. Cool? All right, guys. See you next time. Ciao.